show at the Gramercy Theater this weekend. It was a lot of fun playing HQ Sports in front of a live audience, but I'm happy to be right back in your phones because tonight it's a big one. It's our season three finale and no better way to kick it off than with a fast-paced game of HQ Sports. Tonight we are going for 15 rounds, starting off easy and then getting into TKO territory for a grand prize of $10,000. Another zero to the good spot, you know, before the comma. Love that. Hey, your levels have gotten you this far. This is what all of those points were for, so you will not be getting a question tonight because you made it to this point for the big finale. So I hope you have enough free passes to make it to the finish because that is a nice looking jackpot. $10,000 for us right now, and then big jackpots in trivia and words as well for the big finale night. That means that season four will begin tomorrow. Yes, at 9 p.m. Eastern time, there will be no 3 p.m. game tomorrow as we boot up for season four as we get ready because we have all new features that you're not going to want to miss. It's tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. But hey, this Wednesday, second day into season four, we are having a very special guest host. Eric Stone Street is in for Dogs Trivia at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by words. It's all about dogs. It's our favorite topic here at HQ. We're pet people, and so is Eric. So this is going to be a fun time. All right, it's warm-up time. We get things started before every game of HQ Sports. Find us at... HQ Sports to play along or drop your answer in the chat right now. It was a crazy weekend in the world of sports, right? What was your favorite moment? At Furman, Furmamo0501 said, Bodie Express! Nothing was stopping him from finishing that race, not even losing his jockey, right? He lost the race, but won our hearts. At M. Joven1975 said, The Warriors taking the Trailblazers to the wood chipper in the second half of game number three. At D. Brigadu2 says, Kawhi's victory, of course, making the series two to one. And over 33% of you on our Twitter poll said, Brooks Kepka winning the PGA Championship. That's Gucci, bruh. That's Gucci. Ah, listening to the announcers explain what Gucci meant. That was my favorite thing to happen this weekend. Thanks for playing along. Now let's test your brain on some sports trivia, shall we? To the over 123,000 of you ready for the season three finale with $10,000 on the line. Let's see what you got. Round one starts right now. The Milwaukee Bucks' leading scorer is nicknamed the Greek what? Freak, alphabet, or salad? Hey, we're also keeping track of all the NBA questions that you get right until the conclusion of the NBA Finals. Whoever gets the most right, we're just going to shower you with extra lives. This is one of those, and luckily for you, it was on a round one. Giannis has one heck of a last name, so it's easier to just say Giannis. What other Giannis would we be talking about? Or you could call him the Greek Freak. Freak is your answer here at round number one, 87,518 of you getting that one right. Yes, the six foot 11 Athenian has an insane wingspan. He would not fit on your phones right now. That's why they have me here. Hey, check this out. You can now use multiple extra lives to win HQ. Are those knockout questions standing in your way? You can now use one, two, or even three extra lives in a single game to get your way closer to the prize and become an HQ Sports MVP. But here's the thing, you can only buy extra lives once per game, so stock up right now to make sure that you're ready because they're gonna come at you when you least expect it. We're going for 15 rounds tonight, $10,000 on the line for season three, our finale. Here we go, let's get back into it. Round number two. Who did Magic Johnson just accuse of backstabbing during his recent stint with the Lakers? Rob Palenka, Michael Jordan, or David Stern? Oh, magic. D. 
you love drama, then let me introduce you to the Los Angeles Lakers. Magic Johnson went out and made some pretty strong claims against their G. Yeah, Rob is the man we were looking for here at round number two. 69,985 of you knew that one. Yeah, Magic Johnson is one of those people who is so sweet on Twitter and in real life. Mm hmm He let you have it. Normally, it's the other way around, right? Round three. Where is the stick located in the San Jose Sharks logo? Right flipper, left flipper, or teeth? You've been looking at that logo. You've been paying attention to some hockey playoffs. Well, the shark in the logo seems like he has to maybe be a goalie, right? Because he is straight up biting the stick in half. Not an effective strategy as a forward or a defender. Teeth is your answer here. 75,038 of you getting that one right. Yeah, and you know, by the time Monday rolls around, we might know what our next theme game is because we might know who's going to make those Stanley Cup play. Oh, did I just give it away? Hmm. Round four. Which of these is not a National Lacrosse League franchise? Philadelphia Wings, Boston Minutemen, or Georgia Swarm? Mm -hmm. Which of these is not? The Swarm featured 2017 MVP and two-time Tewaretan Award winner Lyle Thompson. And the Philly Wings relate their name to the Eagles and the Flyers. You know, things with wings. The Boston Minutemen are not real. Boston Minutemen is your answer here. 46,026 of you getting that one right. Oh, wow. A ton of you eliminated here. Over 40,000 of you eliminated here. Hope you have those free passes. The real team from Boston, I know you're dying to know, is the Boston Blazers. Round five. What positions were played by the only players selected in the first round of the MLB and NFL drafts? Wide receiver and pitcher, quarterback and outfielder, running back and shortstop. Oh, I didn't pick in time. I was going to pick a C, but I didn't pick The it. man to unlock the double first round achievement was Kyler Murray, who won the Heisman as a quarterback and was drafted to the A's as an outfielder. Quarterback and outfielder is your answer. 41,413 of you getting that one right. Hey, if you were, you know, this talented and can play two completely different positions in two completely different sports, what would it be? I would be, you know, cornerback and second base, maybe, or bench warmer and bench warmer. That's more my speed. Round six, the first ever women's Ballon d'Or winner is from what country? Japan, USA, or Norway? No. Should have put my French on that. Ballon d'Or. Is that right, Laura? No? Not good. <laughs> she I'm said no good. I, I <laughs> the U.S. Good. has been the dominant force in women's soccer, but this achievement, basically MVP of the world, went to Ada Hegerberg of Norway last year. Norway is your answer. 62,350 of you knew that. The first female Ballon d'Or winner. Was that any better? Please tell me it was. Ballon d'Or. No, s'il vous plaît. Round number seven. Who was the first man to appear in a Super Bowl as a player and a coach? Forrest Gregg, Chuck Knoll, or Mike Ditka? Okay. Okay. As player and coach. Well, Vince Lombardi called him the finest player I have ever coached. Not a bad wreck. It's offensive lineman and Packers legend Forrest Gregg is your answer here. 24,918 of you getting that one right. Wow! Knocking out over 70, nope, knocking out over 13,000. Nope, this is all wrong. Knocking out over 50,000 of you here at round number seven. I hope you have those free passes because we are going to round 15. Here we go. It's round number eight. Which of these father-son duos did not both win NASCAR Cup Series season championships? Dale and Dale Jr., Richard and Lee Petty or Ned and Dale Jarrett. Okay, I want A. You don't have to be named Dale to race cars, but I believe that it would help you. Hey, for popularity, it's hard to beat Dale and Dale Jr., but while Jr. put together a great career, he never quite won the Cup Series at the end of the year. The Pettys and the Jarretts both, however, did. Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. are your answers here. 31,582 of you getting that one right. Hey, whose parents here tonight were or are athletes? I, I want to know what sport. Today. Drop it in the chat right now. Time. Round nine. The official 40-yard dash record at the NFL Combine is held by an athlete who played what position? Running back, cornerback, or wide receiver? I want with A. 
You have to go beyond the top fa top fifteen to find a time that didn't come from any of these positions. But the fastest official time was four point two two seconds by Bengals wide receiver John. Ross, wide receiver is your answer. 20,422 of you getting that one right. Over 35,000 of you here and not fast enough to tap the right answer. We are moving on. The questions are only getting tougher. We got five left. Round number 10. What golfer won the British Nothing. Open at Carnoustie after Jean Vandeveld's historic meltdown? Anyone? Podridge Harrington, Justin Leonard, or Paul Lowry? Oh, this was a moment, all right. Vandevel just needed a six on the last hole to win the 99 Open. He hit it off the grandstand and into the water and ended with a seven. He then lost a three-way playoff with Leonard and winner Paul uh -huh. Laurie, who began the day 10 shots back. Paul Laurie is your answer here. 13,291 of you getting that one right and moving on. We got a couple more left, and they are the toughest ones of the bunch. Can you hang on in there? It's the season three finale, $10,000 on the line. Round 11, which of these famously short NBA players was a first-round draft pick? Earl Boykins, Muggsy Bogues, or Spud Webb? Everything's Why is it always got to be about height, right? It's tough to make the NBA when everyone thinks you're too short to pull it off. Boykins wasn't drafted at all, and Spud Webb went in the fourth round. But with the 12th Washington overall pick... Washington Bullets select Tyrone Bogues. Oh, A.K.A. Muggsy Bogues is your answer here. 9,153 of you getting that one right. Yes, notably in a class that included David Robinson and Scotty Pippen nonetheless. This is not the final round. We got a couple more to go. Round 12. In which league are on-field officials required to wear black underwear in case their pants split? NFL, MLB, or NBA? Whew. This is an interesting one, right? HQ Sports going where no one else dares to go. According to Tom Hanks, there's no crying in baseball, but there is a lot of crouching. So it makes sense that umps have to wear black on black when they're, <laughs> I can't with this one, MLB is your answer, 7,646 of you knew that, and that's more info than you ever needed to know about an umpire, right? My guess would have been blue, get it, blue, blue, round 13, which of these NBA stars once attended medical school, Pau Gasol, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, or Mark Price? Oh, Commission 12's got me all sorts of... All sorts of giggling. All right. Maybe these people learned a thing or two from Dr. J. No, this was real med school. And not only was he playing pro basketball while attending, he didn't even have a car at the time. So eventually, Pau Gasol had to choose basketball full time. Pau Gasol is your answer here. 6,877 of you knowing that one. Yeah, if you knew. You knew he, had a, he was studying for a little mm -hmm. pre-med at the University of Barcelona. You know, I think he did a good job playing ball. We got two left. Oh, my goodness. $10,000 on the line. I pulled it together. I'm sorry. Here we go. Two left. Round 14. In the StatCast era, the hardest hit MLB ball on record was what type of hit? Foul ball, home run, or single? John Carlo Stanton. Hit a ball at 122.2 miles per hour, the exit velocity in 2017, but he only got a single out of it. Single is your answer, 2,248 of you getting that one right. Oh, man. Hey, Stanton is going to be starting rehab games soon, but those AAA Yankees, not looking so bad, right? And neither are 2,000 of you. 2,248 of you have made it this far. It is the end of season three. You worked so hard for this. All of your points, all of your levels, all of your free passes come down to this with a prize of ten thousand dollars on the line that is a lot of dollars let's see what you got round 15 which of these players did not homer in a park where his son later won a home run derby bobby bonds cal ripkin senior or cecil fielder it all comes down to this the whole season one question 
These dads all had derby winning kids, but one never actually played in the majors. The three dads whose kids won a derby in a park they homered in are Cecil, Bobby, and Ken Griffey Sr., which means your answer is Cal Rivkin Sr., and we have 1,761 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations! <laughs> Everything you worked so hard for all season long paid off. All of those points, all of those levels, you did it! We have 1,761 new HQ Sports MVPs. I love it. It looks like we're all taking home a prize of about $5.68. I love it! Dancy Hugh, $5.68 is coming your way. Mr. Welch, oh, I see you there. Pop that wine. Time to celebrate. 568 is coming your way. Bell Cell, 568 is coming your way. Jay Jags, guess you're a Jags fan. 568 is coming your way as well. Amazing, amazing work team. That was Gucci. I just can't pull it off the same way that the golf announcers can, right? Hey, good luck in the rest of the finale games coming up with trivia at 9 and then words right after when we are back on Wednesday. It will be the first game of season 4 for HQ Sports and it's going to be so much fun. There are so many new things to introduce that you're really going to like. All right, we play every Monday and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Come back then. Follow us on social media at HQ Sports and me at Lauren underscore Gambino. Until next time, my friends, I'm Lauren Gambino. Remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in